What's up everybody, a Sparrow with a Gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspirations series. We're starting things off today with the Arietta Vegas. I believe I'm saying that correctly, who knows. Um, and this episode is kind of an interesting one starting things off with this ship because this is yet another episode where if all the builds work correctly, um, then it'll be a fully... Discord-based episode, which I'm kind of glad is happening more frequently, where um, all of the builds were recommended to me through my Discord server. Um, two of them are actually built by the people that recommended them. One was just something that was cool-looking that was recommended to me from a viewer, which is pretty neat. I really like that. Um, but yeah, also I want to point out that the sun seems to be back. It seems to me, I could be wrong, but it seems as though every time there's a big major update, sometimes, like, it's a coin toss, but the sun ends up really dark, and then a little while later, it gets fixed for no apparent reason, so... <laughs> sun's back, but whatever. Uh, but this is a blockade runner type ship, from what I understand on the um, description that it's designed to basically kind of smuggle supplies to people that are under attack or whatever from... I'm, I'm kind of filling in the blank from what I can tell from the description, that's my interpretation anyway, that it's sort of a smuggler type ship. I really like the design of it actually. It looked a lot like smaller from the, the thumbnails. I thought it would be a bit more fighter size. Um, but it's actually got a decent um, profile to it. I mean, I, it's obviously not a frigate or anything, but it's a nice little ship. I like it. I also love the use of the new ion thrusters, but that's not really surprising. I love the new ion thrusters, so there's that. I like these little wing pods, too. We saw something similar in the last episode uh, with the sort of Gundam-esque kind of ship that it had those little retractable... Um, wing pods. And as well, I like the battered armor, because for a smuggling ship it kind of looks like it's supposed to be kind of roughed up. But one thing I find interesting is what is going on here with this piston? We've got a connector there and a merge block there. Okay, so what then moves down? Wait a minute. Does anything move down? I'm confused by this mechanic me mechanism here. I I'm confused by this because... Yeah, I'm confused by it. Because <laughs> um, the merge block is like holding to the connector. So... Maybe? Does this lift off, maybe? Is it... No? I'm lost. We're gonna figure this out eventually. Um, oh, there's a there's a cockpit here. Mayhaps we can control it from here, maybe? Backloader down, backloader up, toggle, or top loader cargo. Wait, 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 what? Merge block on and off, piston on and off, and what are you? Light ramp, loader pistons, top loader security container. Oh. Okay, I know normally I'm prioritized my walkthrough or showcases a little differently, but this is fascinating. I'm I'm very invested in what this piston thing does. So loader piston. So if we turn that on, we we'll probably need them on. I'm guessing. Uh, this is a light ramp. Don't need that. Merge block security container. Let's turn off the top loader. I guess. Top loader says ready co to connect. Um, what happens if I just hit down? Oh! Okay, so that disconnects from there. But then how does. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm confused. Wait, no, that's kind of making sense now. Okay. So. Is this actually like a pod then? That if I click the button again, it would jettison those cargo containers? 
That kind of makes sense, because it said it's a hauling, smuggling ship, so it would be like dropping things off. I just assumed you would connect it and empty the the cargo containers and then, like, fly away. But this actually makes it seem like it's a pod that you, like, drop off. That's really cool. I like that. It's kind of one of those things where it's a shame that in terms of the actual gameplay, it's not really needed. So it's kind of going out of your way to do something that you don't really need to do. Um, but at the same time, it's really freaking cool. That I wish it was more like... I, I, I kind of wish there was a... Like in survival and stuff, there was a more um, necessity for stuff like this. Where you actually had to do it this way. Now, the one context to this, though, is... I have to give the the... Uh, the build credit where credit is due, it does describe being useful for situations where you're under fire and you're dropping things off. That kind of speed, you may not have time to connect up, empty out all the uh, all the cargo containers. It may be faster to extend the thing out, fly by, jettison the thing, and move on. So, that in mind, it actually does have applications. And honestly, it doesn't really matter if it does or not, because it's just freaking cool. But, <laughs> I, anyway, um, but yeah, I really like the gritty kind of look to the ship. Everything's very, like, worn and stuff. Also, really like the use of the, the neon tubes. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like, uh, lighting the room, uh, but in a border kind of way, like it wouldn't interfere or you don't have little spotlights everywhere. You've actually got just running lights, which is pretty neat rules on the ship. Turn off your engine, lock your machines on a connector, the pink couches for employees only. Do not play hide and seek, please, until we find Todd. <laughs> uh, you gotta love, you gotta love builders with a sense of humor. Um, actually, I'm, I'm rather fond of people with a sense of humor in general, but you know. Um, now, this is also using the new control panel, which I'm a big fan of, because rather than having the terribly uh, flat-colored HUD colors, essentially, that is always really hard to read, you can actually designate, like, an LCD screen, which is really cool. So we've got air vent, gate, top, open, close, I'm guessing that's up there. Connector floor lock and unlock. Okay, so that's probably going to be further down. Connector mid. It does have a ramp for um, uh, rovers as well. I'm assuming that's what's down there. I think it. I think that's this build anyway. It's a little confusing when you're doing multiple builds. I'm also going to go out on a limb and say that's the pink couch. Maybe. Kind of looks like it. Um, gate hanger. Gate top. Lights that. Like that? Cool. Yeah, so there's the ramp, because it's on a hinge, so you'd lower the ramp. Oh, here we go, another button panel. There's buttons everywhere. Ramp down. Lights, gate. So the ramp would go down, and then you could drive your rover up and park it in there. Really cool. I'm gonna bring that back up and close the gate. It's so nice when things are very clearly labeled for knuckleheads like me. Um, <laughs> air vent connectors for both these. What is this for? Small projector. Oh! Uh, okay. Timer block, thrusters, antennas. Is this just like a... A... Um, drone pod thing? I'm not really sure what this is for. Interesting. I mean, it's cool, but pointing it right at the armory, I'm not really sure what it's for. I mean, that's not indicative that there isn't a reason, because lord knows I'm not always the quickest on figuring out what some of this stuff is for. It looks really cool, though. I do like that. I'm just not sure what you would do with it once you build it. Um, Alright, so we've got... The armory there, there was a door that went further that way. I wanted to check this out first. We got engineering here. Um, this leads... Where do you lead? 
Okay, so this is an access point to conveyors. I'm guessing also to repair the hydrogen engine that's right there. Got a nice terminal there. Got access to the reactors. Can repair the jump drives, batteries, etc. and so on. So I'm guessing this is both engineering and maintenance. Let me out. Oh, okay. Here's one of them. These look like decoys or drones or something. So that must be the actual bay, because those doors would open and then you'd launch them. I'm not sure why there's one in the hangar, though. I'm not really sure what that's for. But, oh well. Um, it could also just be for decorum, to be honest. Alright, so let's see what goes through this door. I know, we're just letting air out everywhere. Don't care. Um, okay, so... Landing gear there, we're, we've got it. This is on two hinges? Why are these on two hinges? Okay. Interesting. Whoop. So I'm guessing it's an extendable landing gear. I'm just not sure how that would extend. Maybe that first hinge turns while the second one turns and it extends down. If so, that's pretty cool. Also, it looks like a retractable ladder that I don't know how to activate. I'm looking for a button panel or something and I'm not seeing one. Probably came at it from the wrong direction. Um, Alright, we got a lot of controls there on that one. Holy crap. But I do like... What is, what is going on here? What is this? This is madness. Um, Alright, so we've got a rotor going to a small grid. That makes sense. Uh, that's just a regular control seat, one of the new variants. And then we've got... Okay, this is kind of clever. We've got a couple of half slopes. Or, I mean, yeah, half, I think that's half slopes. And then to a ladder to a control seat and then go up with all the screens. That's kind of cool. Didn't really think of that. And then a main control seat there. We can probably turn our lights off at this point. We've got a hollow table readout. Nice little cozy CIC. I like it. I like it. Uh, and then we've got some... a small kitchenette. Alright. Kind of a... Oh, wait. This goes back. Alright. How do we get in there? Probably this door. So we got a med bay. Oh, that's conveniently placed cryo chambers. That's kind of space friendly as far as maximizing space. That's pretty cool. And then, what's. Did we go up here on the other side? Is it the same thing? No. Alright, what are we looking at? So this is like a crew quarter area. What about you? Same? Same ish, but more like every other, like the rest of the crew. And that one, the blue door is probably the captain's cabin, I would imagine. And this comes out here, which is where we were at. Okay. So I think we've got everything kind of explored. What goes up here? This must just be like the server. Oh no, there is a door. Oh, this leads back to the hangar control. Okay. I forgot about that door. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, so I'm guessing that that landing gear is controlled in here. Uh, bar one. I wonder if these are different or are they the same? All hinges. All hinges. I'm going to say that these two are the same. Um, I'm going to. I actually think this is probably an image. Now that I'm thinking about it, I was thinking at first, how did they get all this information on here? But I think it's an image. All hinges lock on... Oh, you have to use the remote blocks. Okay. And is this the main... Okay, none of these are really the main, it looks like. And if it is, you can control it differently. So I'm going to say this one probably is. So we'll activate the remote block. Um, so now we have hinges, on, off, parachutes, spotlights... Forward thrust, increase, decrease, wings. Ooh, wings. Okay, that must have just turned uh, turned the lock off. Wings up and down is eight. Oh, it turned the lock on. They were already off. So that's cool. 
I wonder how much of that is practical as far as if there's a risk of tearing those off at high speeds or anything, if you were in atmosphere or whatnot. Um, otherwise, I'd probably just leave them up all the time, but who knows. Um, cockpit lights, bar two is all hinges, activate landing gear. Okay, so that's on a timer block. Deactivate landing gear, so that's probably going to control the hinges all at one time. Um, auto lock, lock gears, unlock gears, signal lights, all thrusters, ramp up down. So basically, we don't really need to worry about most of those because we already kind of played around with them. Um, door timers, activate guns, deactivate guns, so bar five sounds fun. Uh, shoot once rockets, and then cameras and drone launch. Okay, so there are drones. Cool. So let's see how this works. If we hit two, where's the landing gear? Oh, that's... wait, that is down. Why am I not seeing them move? Anybody else seeing them move? I'm not seeing them move. Are there more than... I think there's more than one. Is there more than one landing gear? Let's try it the other way. Maybe it's reversed. Oh, or maybe it would help if I turned on the all hinges lock on and off. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So the weird thing about that lock on and off thing is that it actually looks like even though it's called a hinge lock, on means it's activated, which is weird. I would think that, that would mean that you... Um, have the hinges locked, but apparently not. So that's kind of cool that it actually works and you do have that ladder. If you can kind of see it, it's hard to see. I can't zoom in any further, but the ladder does extend with it, which is pretty cool. And I'm really digging the amount of uses people are finding for the hinge blocks. I think it's really cool. All right. So once that's done and they're looks like they're about retracted, so we'll turn them off. Oh, landing gear active. Okay, there's a lot of screens information and stuff, so let's go to bar five. Um, I thought this was, this is a drone. Oh, bar five, so that's bar nine? Oh, nine is our weapons, okay. So, drone, timer block. What are they all for? Timer block, star, oh, different drones, okay. So if we open the doors, where are they coming out at? Oh, there they are, right behind those four thrusters, I believe. Um, all right, I'm just gonna press one, maybe that it'll open the door because the doors aren't toggling. There it goes. And there goes a drone. Well, that's cool. Now, I don't know how to control the drone, but Maybe you just do it remotely through the eye panel, possibly. Mm, I don't see the drone on the panel. So, about four. Don't see the options to control the drones from here. So that's interesting. Um, I'm probably just missing it. A lot of people tell me about stuff later and then go, you missed the you know, the button thing that I was looking right at it, so I'm not too concerned. Um, Alright, so... Activate guns. I have a feeling like they're gonna extend out from somewhere, because I honestly don't see any guns on this one. Oh, where there they are. Yeah, they do actually roll up, that's cool. Okay, armament activated. Nice. Deactivate guns, beacon, shoot guns, so six and seven. Okay. Uh, turrets are on. Wait a minute. Oh, those are machine guns. I thought those were rockets. Well, good grief. Oh no, the rockets are right in front of my face. Right there. Okay. So that's what's um, extending and retracting. That's pretty cool. Actually, they did it really neat that it rolls into... Um, the arm there of the armor, it's concealed in the armor. That's pretty cool, I really like that. Alright, so lastly, let's give, give this thing a whirl. Uh, wow, does it accelerate! Holy crap does it accelerate! 
this sucker can... That's like a Ferrari. Zero to sixty in like two seconds. Um, the turning is a little more slow compared to the acceleration. It doesn't turn as fast as it takes off, but can this get up and go though? Yes. Um, so yeah, I really like the ship overall. It's a very interesting design. It's got a lot of different crazy mechanics and stuff in it that I think are really cool. A lot of script-based mechanics. And it's pretty maneuverable, and I like the, the overall look of it. So I think it's a cool ship. So I think that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, so here is a pretty interesting ship as well. This is the other ship that was uh, recommended to me through Discord that was built by one of my viewers, I believe. Um, the Settler Class Flagship Mark II. Now this is an interesting one if you read the description because it actually has a bit of a, an interesting backstory. Um, the original Mark I ship was designed by piecemealing other ships together um, from hijackings and other things in a survival playthrough of the Builder. Or I say survival, it said playthrough, but I'm assuming. Um, then the original build was lost, and so this is essentially a recreation of that build. Um, so there's a few variants and other things, but it... The, the piecemealing part of it, I think, actually makes it have a cooler design. Um, I'm trying to kind of play with stuff like that in my current playthrough, uh, where you kind of build out a necessity, not necessarily out of style, and see what happens. And I personally really like what happened with this ship. It looks pretty cool and different, but I think a lot of that has probably come from <laughs> kind of taking pieces of other ships and kind of putting them together. Um, it's like there's multiple different areas that look like they're thruster pods that you already have somewhere else, but then it's like, well, that could have been another captured ship kind of thing. Now, I imagine, I'm, I'm speculating at this point, but I imagine that being that this is a Mark II recreation, there was a bit more uniform, like the two sides looking similar and stuff like that. I am imagining there was a bit more polishing that went through the second uh, iteration. However, I could be mistaken, and it could have just been the way that uh, it was attached almost originally. But uh, yeah, it looks really cool, and I especially like this bridge central area. You've got like, like this long area here, and uh, there's kind of this under glass bridge going on here, but then you've got these support pillars and it's got almost a runway in the middle that looks really cool. I really like that. Um, it did mention in the description that there were multiple cockpits and bridges and stuff like that. Again, kind of coming from the uh, pulling in different builds and stuff like that, you end up with um, that, that type of thing because, you know, the other ship had more than one, yada, yada, yada. Now, this is intriguing to me. It's a hin it's a dual hinge, it looks like, with a connector. But I don't know. I haven't messed with connectors enough. I'm not sure if that allows material to be passed through or not. Uh, what do we got here? Connector hinges, hinges, uh, switch lock, and connector on and off. So if we hit this, so it brings up the connector. That's kind of a cool idea. I like that. And I believe hinges allow um, materials to be brought in, I think. I just haven't actually tested it, so I'm not sure. And that toggles it down. I don't know what this one does, since it doesn't seem to be affecting it at all, but whatever. So that's pretty cool. Um, that allows for, like, you know, if you have a rover or a fighter type ship, let's go this way. Oh, huh, and here I thought that was going over there. Okay. The layout is probably going to be an issue for me to figure out. <laughs> More than likely. I have difficult with difficulty with uh, regular ships. Oh, this is cool. I really like the lighting in here, or lack thereof, rather. It could prove problematic in really dark areas, but because we have the sun right there, that makes it actually look pretty cool. I like that. I don't know, though, what you do in the dark, though I guess you could just put, like, no, maybe not. You'd have to put running lights down on the floor. 
I guess, because that top block is a separate block. Alright, um, let's go ahead and fly over this way. I'm curious how this connects up. So we've got a separate airlock system here that leads into this side pod ship. Um, now what would actually be interesting to me, since they are kind of separated ship areas, if, I don't know, we'll have to kind of look at how everything's laid out here, but just off the top of my head, it'd be kind of cool if you could keep them separated with merge blocks to where if you wanted to, you could actually break the ship apart into multiple smaller ships. Um, that would be kind of interesting to me. But, okay, this is probably going to lead to the main. That we went pretty far down there. So I'm guessing that's going to take us back to the main fuselage. Um, ooh, what is this? Takes us out to the top, maybe? Yes. Okay. So this is another exterior entrance exit. Oh, there's one over on that side, too, that I missed. Oops! Alright. So then if we go down here... I'm guessing this will take us to... the main one. Would be my assumption. Alright, we've got a... what looks like a hangar here. Or some kind of hangar. Because we've got... the main... like, cargo bay doors. Oh, there it is. There's a hangar. So that's probably... Ooh, a double door. This is actually really cool, by the way. Um, because I don't know. I haven't tested this. But I don't know if you could fit a vent here. If the block would stay sealed. Because it kind of looks like this is all... Uh, where's... Where's my, where's my block? Oh, it's not letting me. Okay. Um, yeah, that kind of looks like this whole door is one door, so it's halfway through the, the block space. But I was thinking, if you could actually put a vent here in the bottom, that would actually make for a very small airlock with a, do uh, a very large door profile, which would be kind of cool. Um, but I digress. This is actually a neat hanger as well. I like the kind of grooves here in the wall. That's kind of a nice touch. And the color scheming makes it neat. Um, that's interesting. We've got a connector on a rotor with gears on it. I can't say I've ever seen that before, but it's a neat idea. I also like this, how this um, uh, ceiling kind of shapes and molds around the jump drive's core. That's pretty cool. I like that look a lot. That is definitely approved. Ooh, okay, so we got a cool war room kind of thing going on here. And it looks like we're at the back of the interior of the ship. Um, with a with a planetary diagram laid out here. Very nice. Alrighty. And what does this do? Left wait, left pi oh lift pistons. See, this is why I like the new panels. I can read them better. Lift gears, rover hanger. So that's the rover hanger. Wait, rover hanger? I thought that was the rover hanger. Oh, I guess this is how you bring it in and then it goes down that ramp. Okay. So there's that. Uh, lift gears. Oh, that's going to be the locking of the gears. Lift pistons. Wait, is that on a piston? Okay. There it goes. One's on, on, off. Oh, that's retractable. I didn't see the piston there. Well, that's very cleverly concealed. Okay. I did not think that would work. I thought that would damage the blocks. Huh. Alright, so we got like three... three of them or something. That's... can't figure out- one of them is an on-off. Gotta be. I'm really surprised that that actually worked. Interesting. That's really cool. 
So that would go down, grab them, you'd connect with the landing gears and then draw it back up. And then once it's up, you could then disable them. That's really cool. I really like that. I just did not think that would work without damaging everything. So that's really neat. That's, I think, the hard part for me when it comes to building, um, like piston based mechanics and things like that is the hard part for me is I never really am 100% sure of how many blocks each thing can go, which blocks have the wrong collision boxes and can get damaged, which ones can't. You know, it's like uh, from playing Minecraft and stuff, it's like, well, you know that light lights, th a torch lights things up seven blocks away or whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. And you can kind of be pretty sure of it. And although you can in here, there's certain exceptions to it that make it a little tricky, um, and I'm not too familiar with those exceptions to uh, have it fully down pat. Um, Alright, so we've got some missing blocks here. Hydrogen drives, torpedoes, doors, hangar, Gatling turrets, missile turrets. We don't really need to control those very much, so that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so we can't open the torpedo bay doors from here, at least. Um, what? Where are the missiles firing the from? So we've got front missiles, it looks like. Looks like four of them. Well, that's useful. So I can't tell if this is the main bridge. I don't think it is. I feel like that one on top is probably the main. And this is... Pro well, this does say bridge, so maybe it is. I was thinking maybe it was more of a battle bridge, but, um, screw it. Let's go ahead and mess around with the flight. I know normally I use that last, but I'm right here, so... Oh, we got the dampeners off. So, there are a few mods on this build, however, most of them seem unnecessary in terms of their... The, it should work fine if you remove them. It's like we got the colored thrusters and things like that, but if you disabled that mod, I'm pretty sure you just have regular ones, so... Um, there is also quite a few blueprint-based things, um, but I gotta admit, with full ion... I, well, I say ion. These are actually hydrogen, aren't they? <laughs> Refer back to the changed colors. I was gonna say it accelerates really quick for ion only, and then I was like, wait, it's not ion only, is it? Um... So, acceleration and deceleration is actually really fast for the size of the ship. Um, the turning and everything is a bit more comparable to what you'd expect from a ship this size. It's, it's a little sluggish on the turning, um, but it's still... It, I'm actually impressed with how quickly it can get up and go. And that's probably because it seems like it has a million hydrogen engines on it. <laughs> or thrusters. I keep saying engines. And then remember, there's actually hydrogen engines now, so I should probably stop saying that. <laughs> uh, Alright, so this takes us back to where we started, which was this doorway here. That leads to the same thing from the other side. This is going to lead to the other pod. So what goes this way? Cryo room. Okay, a couple of cryo chambers. I don't know if I fully explored everything on here or not. Um, the nature of this being a bit more of a piecemeal type ship with multiple redundant areas makes it a little difficult for me to figure out. It's like, normally if you see the armory, you're like, okay, I saw the armory, whoop de doo Like, I must have seen them, but this one may have more than one. It may have multiple things, so that makes it a little trickier. But, I'm not sure, is this, is there glass here? Okay, man, this clear glass, I never, I always gotta look in the corners and stuff to see, because I was like, what is the point of having two doors here, and it's one's a, one's a backup for maintenance, and one's a viewing type room. Um, and I was like, why is that there? Um, Alright, and this is the airlock, it said, so this is technically, I guess, the main entrance to the central fuselage area. So that's cool. Alright, um, did we look here? We did. I'm going to... no, we didn't go this way. Alright, hold on. I was gonna say, I'm gonna say we've seen everything and hope I'm right, but then I forgot that we hadn't seen this. 
Um, I do kind of like this idea, and I probably should incorporate it in my own builds. I like the glass floor here, there's no surprise there, uh, but I like that they actually kind of made this a central object, like build the floor around this block. Um, Normally I end up trying to hide most of my production blocks and things, but this is actually a cool way to do it if you need the, the space set up a certain way and you can't get it to work, is just make it kind of a central uh, viewing type thing. Uh, what do we got here? Man, it just keeps going on forever! Alright, what is what is this? What, what are you? Ugh, I can't read that. Something lights think. Oh, elevation. Oh, this is an elevator. Ooh, really? Well, aren't you clever? That's pretty cool. All right, we got the landing gears there. We can bring this back up. That's pretty cool. I actually really like this. And again, um, now that they've added small glass or small grid glass, um, that makes it, you know, you don't need mods anymore to do stuff like that, but that's a cool design. I really like that. Alright, so we've got kind of a standard conveyor area going on here. We've got production and refinery stuff. I am letting air out everywhere. Don't care. Um, Alright, so this seems to be more of the industrial, like, conveyors and tanks, and here's the cargo area. I feel like we're gonna pop out somewhere around the bow. I'm guessing. Or right at the very edge of the bow. That works too. At least I was kind of on the right track. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that we've seen everything on this build. I could be wrong, let me know in the comments, but overall, I really like this ship. Um... I mainly just really enjoy how, I don't know what word to use, but I guess realistic it kind of looks that, it, you know, a lot of times you build out of necessity, not because something seems like a cool idea. Um, and so it has that necessity look to it, that it's like it, it, you polished it off to where it looks uh, refined and it looks like you meant to do it this way, but it definitely has an air that the original design schematic was kind of like, you know, uh, we need this to be here, so make it work, and then figure out how to make it work. And I find some of my best uh, results usually come from that style, so I agree in this particular case that the same is true here. Um, I definitely didn't see everything, because I missed this room. It's an observation deck, not sure where that connects to. <laughs> um... Is there a door? Oh, there is a door. Let's let's pop in here real quick and see where this connects to. Yep, didn't see any of this. Um, well, all right. <laughs> I guess we'll I guess we'll look at it a bit more. I was trying to cut some time down because I can see my uh, stopwatch is going even longer than I meant to. So this is gonna be a bit of a long episode. I apologize, but. Uh, what happens when people give me cool builds that take me forever to look through? I don't know how I used to do these in like 20 minutes. I must have just been like screaming through all of this stuff. Alright, there's a cryo room. We've been here before. Haven't we? <laughs> this doesn't actually look familiar. Alright. I'm getting lost now. I'm getting turned around. Um, okay, wait. Wait. Yep, we've been here. This go yep, okay. So where did I went up here? I th yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know how I got out of here. <laughs> I saw that did I go I must have gone I don't know. I don't know how I got out of here, but I don't remember seeing this area. Nope, didn't see any of this. Oh, this is cool. That's really cool, actually. This is like a airlock that leads out um, to a platform, but from inside you can see the whole platform. That's really cool. I kind of like that. That's one of those little things that you would think, yeah, why wouldn't you do that? But it just never occurred to me. I never thought of it. We've got an outer deck here. 
Love the wood flooring. Very nice. Very nice touch. Uh, bedding, apparently. That's cool. It's an interesting way to do it. Uh, we've got bathrooms. Man, this ship just has so many doors. Wait. Okay, we're back at the main place. I never went this way. Oi. Alright. Now I'm going to say we're done with this build. I probably still missed other things, but we're going to call it here. So with that, let's move on to the last one. Okay, so last but not least, we have the UFS 110 Defender Convoy Dreadnought. And I completely remembered all of that off the top of my head long before uh, realizing it's actually written here on the side. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is actually, I know I don't often do too many ground vehicles, but that's because most people don't make really cool ground vehicles as often as they make really cool spaceships, but this is a really cool ground vehicle. And it's actually pretty big. The crazy part is it's kind of all small grid stuff, which is nuts when you consider how large this thing is. That it's a, uh, it's a small grid build, which is, yeah. Um, uh, the one thing, though, is I do believe in the uh, description and stuff that it does reference that it uses super gridding. Um, so that would be something to keep in mind if you're not a fan of it or something like that. But um, I don't really care that much. I can't remember exactly what the difference is now that they've added uh, the ability to switch. I think it's when you have to use stuff so that you can get large grid on a small grid. I think that's super grids because in the large grid ships you would just put a rotor and put a small rotor head and then you have a small grid but I don't think the reverse works to where a small rotor can have a large rotor head. I don't remember but I think that's what it is. I could be wrong. Uh, feel free to correct me in the comments and whatnot if I am. Um, so this is a pretty cool a uh, hatch set up here. We've got a connector? Wait, what? That's interesting. Oh, it must be on a timer block. I totally expected that to just be a toggle of the uh, connector and then you had to go over and push the rotor block or push the rotor button. Apparently not. Um, so, oh, look at this. This is a nice little trick. Very cool. You know what I just thought of is doing these with the new um, neon textures that have like the name. I wonder if that would make them look like they're lit, like they're glowing type thing. That would be kind of interesting. Anyway, um, this ship, or rather uh, rover dreadnought thing, is basically designed to be the head or tail of a convoy and kind of serve as both a defender and um, and a resupply, that kind of thing, and kind of lead a convoy or take up the rear and protect the, the other convoys or the, the other trucks and rovers in the convoy and stuff like that. So that's hence why it's kind of heavily armored and heavily armed based on these. Obviously these are modded. Um, I'm not sure. Based on the block size. I'm guessing, and that's a hinge, I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I could be wrong, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you could remove these and use standard weapons like rockets and uh, gun turrets. I think it would work, um, but I'm not sure. So uh, the, the mods wouldn't be too hard to remove um, and, and modify from what I can tell. Although, the only two that I know I had to, that was listed, was the smoothbore uh, cannons there and the energy shield mod. Um, but when I pasted it in, it still gave me a warning about um, not all blocks were loaded in the world type thing as if I was missing a mod. So there could be other things that are missing. Uh, even the description mentioned that it only used two, so I'm not sure what the game is detecting. But, um, yeah, so there's that. Um, ooh, this is kind of cool. I like how compact everything is in here, and it feels very uh, plausible. It feels very realistic. Hence, I mean, 
you are using a small grid so you can get a lot more detail but I mean look at this with all the busted up armor and rust and stuff like this looks like a legit um, you know convoy truck it, it reminds me of almost like actually this room right here kind of reminds me of the ghost from Star Wars Rebels just a little bit not not like a one-to-one -one, just the vibe it gives me a lot of that vibe um, but yeah, I like the interior and stuff. The uh, the coloring work here to get this like tiled gridding, oi, that must have taken forever. Um, I don't envy them in that regard. We got now. Wait a minute. This is a cryo chamber. Are these? Hmm. Are these DLC cryo chambers? Cause I don't remember that look. I thought those were modded looks. Could be wrong. I'm guessing I'm wrong because I don't have any cryo chamber mods, so I'm guessing that's part of the DLC. But that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. I'm trying to make sure that I don't miss any interior stuff. Now this is a cool view. I like this window. That's pretty neat. I'm guessing this is kind of a an office area here. Is it the same over here? No, actually it's not. We've got a med bay over here. Okay. Complete with the old school. Um, upside down LCD screen beds. I haven't seen those very often since we had the uh, the DLCs that added. Uh, well, DLC or patch. I think that was actually part of an update that added the bed block. But ever since the those blocks got added, I haven't seen some of those older designs that everybody used to use. So that's kind of that's kind of refreshing. Um, we've got a very nice and cozy bridge up here. This actually reminds me of like a destroyer, like a modern day destroyer's bridge. How you have kind of that step up and then like the small viewing window area. Ha! <laughs> Windows 95! <laughs> I was not expecting that. In the, uh, in the description it mentions the system running on an old OS. <laughs> but I didn't figure that was what they were going with. I really thought they were commenting on like I'm not that good at making my own scripts or something. I did not expect a bunch of textures for, uh, for Windows 95. Oh, that's amazing. Alright, uh, let's do a quick test run here. Take control of that. Uh, left turret fire, left turret single fire. Oh, this is a turret control. Okay. Ooh. Well, that's fun. What is this? What did that do? Single fire. Uh... I don't know why there's, like, debris going everywhere. It makes me feel like I'm, uh, destroying stuff. So I'm gonna stop doing that. <laughs> I imagine it's probably supposed to do that, but anyway. Um, driver's seat, handbrake, headlights, engines, hangar doors, thrusters, and... There's a speed governor on it to keep it from going too crazy. You need the stretching animation for long drives. Um, it doesn't have the handbrake on it, looks like, so we're just going to go ahead and give it a go. And like I said, in the description it does talk about... Um, man, I didn't even look at the top part. I should have flown up at the top and looked at the top. Look at that. That's really cool. Look at all the, all the grids and grooves in there. Man, that's cool. This thing's just a tank. You know what this reminds me of, actually, looking at it from a, an aerial view all the way around kind of thing? It actually reminds me of, like, one of those old G.I. Joe-type tanks. You know, the ones that are completely ridiculous and not in any way plausible for modern military to be using, that it's like a total mobile base crawler thing. That's what this reminds me of. It's, it's one of those, like, G.I. Joe-type overkill armored are like APC transport tank things um, in a, in all of the best ways possible, like in all of the cool ways of, <laughs> of making you think that. I could definitely see this being like an action figure uh, micro machine type thing. I know I just aged myself a lot right there, but I digress. Anyway, 
Um, but yeah, overall, really, really like this. I don't know if I saw everything. I may have missed a corridor or two here or there, but I think I got everything. And given the time, I think we're going to wrap this episode up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.